Hallelujah. Welcome back, everyone, to Uptime Community. We're so happy that you can join us live today. I'm Brother Greg, and if you're new here, we are a community of believers that are actively watching for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah. We want to make this an interactive forum, so we do welcome your questions and comments. Um, we're going to get right into this, but uh, I do want to let you know that we have a special guest today who has a very interesting and unique um, package that he's developed for those who have um, who will potentially be left behind. And we don't want anyone to be left behind. Obviously, uh, we know what we're coming up against here is going to be something that is going to be horrific um, and going to be pretty much hell on earth. Uh, we don't want to see any of our loved ones uh, have to go through uh, the great, what's known as the great tribulation period. Um, and we just mainly here on this channel, we wanna make people aware of the times that we're living in that we are in the times of the end, and we can really substantiate this and, and back it up biblically. Okay, so please go back to our recent podcasts, uh, piece, uh, recent webcasts. Uh, we, we definitely want to make sure that everyone can hear what, what is being said, uh, because it is extremely important, especially in these, uh, these last days that uh, we're living in. So I wanna introduce our uh, forum, our panel, uh, First, I want to introduce uh, John Boucher from Watchmen for that great day. Welcome Praise back, Brother John. Praise God, brother. How are you doing this week? Praise God. I'm doing great. I'm doing excellent. I've been all prayed up, and uh, I had a great week, you know, just basking in the Lord's presence. Really, that's what it's it's yeah. all about. It. I'm with family. And uh, I also want to welcome back Bob Barber from well, um, End Time Dream and Vision. Hey, everybody. Bob. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me back, as always, Greg. Thank you. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, we have our uh, none other but than Brother Kevin Hookman. How are you, brother? Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon to some. And, uh, you know, to this week was pretty amazing. I, I got to say it. I think every week we just – I appreciate you saying look back to the podcast because, and the webcast because the stuff that we talked about a couple months ago happening now. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, it is. we're you know, it's it, where we're seeing this stuff unfold right before our very eyes. It's going to be a good, uh, a good week to talk about all this stuff. But you know what's it? One thing I want to mention though, we are in kind of a trough here. We have late, you know, we get those labor pains, right? And they hit really hard. Right mm -hmm. now, I think we're in a little dip. Yeah. But the next one that hits is going. I think is going to be the big daddy. It's going to. I don't think it's going to uh, stop past that one. I would have to say it's right. just be a continuous thing. Yeah, um, it, it's getting a little scary. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, it, you know, I really, I'm not fearing what's coming. I'm actually excited only because not for what's coming in terms of the yeah, the bad, the negative stuff, <laughs> but the fact that all of this stuff becomes evidence, more and more evidence of the return of our Lord and Savior, because it's all bi uh, prophecy. It's biblical prophecy coming to life in front of, right in front of our eyes. I mean, this is an amazing time to be living in. Um, and, you know, the Bible warns us not to welcome this, this tribulation, not to, not to welcome the, the horrific stuff, but to warn people, mm -hmm. be excited to know that we are in the times that we're living in, that we are looking for the return of our Lord and Savior mm -hmm. and that he is coming soon. And that's something to be joyous about. That's something to really want right. And, uh, it's the alternative. Know. It's the alternative to that. I mean, it's a, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go through that. That's coming. Jesus. Jesus. And God is showing is and God is showing everybody a lot even more apparent every day what's coming. I mean, and mm -hmm. so you can either be part of that or you can be part of me. And what he promised is that there's a blessed hope that those who are worthy will escape and those who will not who are not will not escape. And yeah. so there is a distinction between two groups and what they get to experience during that period of time. And we highly recommend mm -hmm. that you uh, you accept Jesus as your savior and accept the the you know the saving grace that God provides through faith Save. in Jesus his savior and that's the only yeah. way. Yeah. There are only ways go down the other path and it's just that it's just that distinction God is where good. you line up and where you're at. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to have Rob, brother Robert come on and, and you know tell us a little bit. You, you agree to that, brother Robert? 
Is that a, is that a big game? <laughs> yes, that's it. That is for sure. Good afternoon, you guys. And uh, I, di I didn't know whether I was going to be able to make it today, but I, I decided that this was really important. So um, had a kind of an interesting week. Sure. I'm not going to go into everything, but okay. um, but it's really it's it's true. It, you know, we're we're just out there to make the word of God available and uh, let people know that there is a loving God and uh, Jesus Christ did come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And he's Hallelujah. he's uh, our mediator and he's still actively mediating, which I'm glad he is because, boy, do we need it. <laughs> That's for Amen. sure, bro. And um, yeah. I'm just uh, I'm just thankful to be breathing. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we yeah. talk about this the peace that passes all understanding right. uh, every week, don't we? Hallelujah. Because that's what we experience. We, I mean, with everything that happens every week, all the darts, all the new things you can or can't say, all the the, the new things that are right and what people's eyes are, that they, they hit you, and you have to have that full armor on to be able to discern. What's the what's the right spirit? You test the spirits, and and during that whole period of time, we're just enduring all that until the end, until Amen. our end, whenever that end may be, and whatever uh, end that may be. And John speaks about it a lot. It could be tomorrow, it could be today for you. You don't know when you're going to go, sure. but uh, there will be there will come a time where the dead in Christ are raised, and th those who are alive who remain will be caught up with them in the air and they'll be forever with the Lord. And if, if we'll, we could be a part of that. That's what we're seeing is that we're seeing the buildup to those bad things. And when you see the buildup to the bad things, that means the good thing is going to happen before the bad things, which means it's so much closer. Right. We're walking in a jungle right now. And as we continue to go through this jungle, this jungle is getting thicker and thicker and thicker. But the thing is, once we exit that jungle, it's going to be one step. And that's going to be the rapture resurrection at that point. Amen. Because Amen. and that, that step is a is a cliff. Because if you cannot go any further unless there is a move of God that enables you to go further past that point. And that's the rapture resurrection. And of course, all those are going to be left behind. They're going to have a an, an incredible time here. And I don't mean good either. And no. uh, we got something special for all those who are going to be left behind, right, Greg? That's right. Would you uh, introduce us to our guest, our special guest, Bob? Absolutely. Uh, everybody, I'd like to introduce you to the uh, name is uh, Raymond. And what's your last name, Raymond? Chrysler, Chry right? Uh, Chrysler. German Chrysler, case. right. Yes. Ray Raymond here has a YouTube channel, and uh, he I've been going through a lot of his videos. Really good at being able to pull information and be able to post. Uh, he has some videos where he talks himself, but he's really good at finding information on the Internet. That's real good key information, putting videos together. He's really good at doing that. He's been, doing, he's been on YouTube now for what, about 11 years, right, Raymond? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Actively since and, 2011. Great. Great job, and thank you for that labor of love. And um, one of the best reasons why I wanted to bring on his channel for a few reasons. One is um, you live in California, so I'm sure you have a lot of stuff straight from the horse's mouth that you can share with us in this video. Yes. And two, you also have something that's called uh, the Rapture uh, Prepared with the Rapture Preparedness Packet that yes. we are going to be giving out to everybody for free everywhere that wants it. Okay, yes. and here, right here, we'll just jump right into it. This is a snapshot from, from our website at edvforme.org. You can go here, and you can download this packet for free, and go to the website. If you're not already logged in or have it, all you got to do is go there and register. It's a free registration. Just get on there and register. You're on the website. It has all our videos from our, our YouTube channel. It's basically the backup for, for End Time Dream and Vision for my channel. So all of our videos, all the stuff is there. But be it as it may, we also put Raymond's um, preparedness, rapture preparedness packet here on our website for you to download for free. And tell us about this download. This thing is a huge download. It's like seven gigs. Isn't that amazing? It's seven, right? Seven. Correct. Isn't that? Yeah. It's funny. It actually came up to the number seven. So there's. Um, so why don't we just jump into this, uh, Raymond? Since we have you here, let's get it out of the way. Um, so tell us about this uh, Rapture Preparedness Packet that we're giving to everybody for free now. Okay, certainly. I, I wanted to start with a, a little uh, 
show and tell where uh, initially uh, in 2011, I had prepared a data CD with I believe 450 megabytes of information uh, with a message here saying, if you receive this after the rapture, this will have answers for you. And that's how we were preparing after rapture materials for those left behind back then. And the Lord put it on my heart this year, particularly with all the craziness going on in the world and in, the, in, in America in particular, to revisit this and to do more basically, because um, I get, what was revealed to me is that as we can suspect anyway, Christian materials and the message of salvation um, end times Bible prophecy, anything that is truly going to lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ will be rapidly removed from the internet after the rapture or as soon as there's an offer, maybe even before. But I believe that we are the indwelling Holy Spirit, the restrainer that prevents these evil plans to go to full fruition. But soon afterwards, uh, all hell, uh, forgive me, is going to be broken loose. And, there, and so what we're trying to do with this is uh, uh, I, I guess the Lord moved me to update this, and I'll show you on the camera here. This is uh, the seven gigabyte flash drive with a little tag that says, if you see this after the rapture, and it describes it as an unexpected disappearance of millions of Christians, uh, this flash drive will have answers for you. And it's just simply a eight gigabyte hard drive, and we filled it with over 400 digital files. Now, um, most of them, I'll, I'll start with the main components. We have the Bible in 80 different foreign languages. And I actually went through Wikipedia and looked at all the most spoken languages in the world. And I found a list of, I, I think it was up to thousands of Bibles in foreign languages, but many of them are dead languages or those populations now speak either English or Spanish or Portuguese or so forth. So I tried to look and uh, found 80 different foreign language Bibles they're in this flash drive, uh, as well as an English King James Version, New King James Version, um, English Standard Version. There's a children's Bible. There are lengthy uh, Bible study guides to, to aid in that. I borrowed heavily from uh, preachers of the pre-tribulation rapture who believe that the Bible is inerrant and without error. And um, that just the, what should be obvious, salvation is by God's grace, grace through faith alone, not of our works. And I, I can't believe that these days we're even debating that online to some degree. But uh, I, I, there are preachers like, you know, J.D. Farag, uh, J. Vernon McGee, and uh, uh, Chuck Smith and so forth, uh, Chuck Missler. Uh, and they have a lot of materials of theirs available online for free. What I have, so I have the Bibles, I have the Bible study guides, I have, and then I have a bunch of materials particularly written for those left behind from Christians now. These are love letters and messages. Some of them are letters, some of them are videos. We have about 40 videos describing what to expect, particularly warning against the agenda of the Antichrist, the reasons absolutely not to take the mark of the beast and, and so forth. And this, these uh, files are all on this flash drive. They are very basic, they're PDF files. These are Adobe, Acrobat, you can read it with an Acrobat reader or any knockoff PDF reader, Microsoft Word documents, and then your basic video format is MP4. And I, I mention this because every computer has a reader that can view these videos and read the documents. It's nothing uh, that you need to download any special software for because on our cell phones, our smartphones, uh, a lot of the Bible applications that you, we have even if you're not aware of it, you load uh, the application and then you have to validate your account. Um, I believe you can view without a validation, but most people do. At that point, it's tracking you and, and it works well because I can uh, highlight passages and it would, my phone will remember. And if I have to swap phones, all the highlighted Bible passages follow me to the next phone and so forth. I don't have to start over again. A downside of that might be if envision the world where the Antichrist is now uh, has his tentacles on everything and is consolidating power and these applications go off and because of the validation aspect that requires an internet connection I can't guarantee that these Bible apps will be working in the tribulation this 
is all self-contained. The, the files are right here. They don't need any validation. You don't need the internet at all. Anybody could take a flash drive and then go over to a friend's house, copy the files over in 20 minutes, they have a copy. And they can, from there, copy it onto flash drives, hand it out to friends. The flash drive even has the text of the tags um, and suggestions of where to get these uh, flash drives. I mean, I paid $3 each on Amazon. They're very cheap these days. Um, so I, I'm anticipating, my, my hope is that this is something that goes viral. And if not now, but at the time, uh, we get these pre-situated, like uh, the weapons of spiritual warfare that will be needed by the tribulation saints. We're pre-positioning these now. And eventually, at the time of the rapture, those left behind, those who stumble upon this and are, you know, saved through Jesus and, and recognize that they have, you know, missed the rapture, but they have uh, uh, some work ahead of them to, and will have to refuse the mark of the beast and refuse the Antichrist agenda. They will have many of the tools that they need right here to win over others to Christ. And, the, and, and an unbeliever who stumbles upon this, and particularly seeing dozens and dozens and dozens of messages from born again believers now saying, we know this is coming. This is, these were not UFOs that took the Christians away that we thought were backward and needed to be removed for a new enlightened era on earth. No, the, the Lord Jesus Christ as prophesied for thousands of years has taken Christians out of harm's way before seven years of uh, trial and judgment on the earth. And but we will be re returning. There's a place for you in the kingdom of heaven. It might be difficult, but here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to do. The Bible is there. Bible study guides and our messages to our our loved ones that have been left behind are there. And the, so that's really what this is about. Um, and I'll, I guess I just leave it at that. Um, uh, lots of messages from uh, us today speaking to those in the future uh, about what they can expect. And uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that presentation. Oh, Raymond. certainly. Sir. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're very excited that you're, you're doing this. Um, you know, it reminds me a little bit of something that, uh, I had participated a while back in, um, something <clears throat> called raptureletters.com. And, uh, someone had built a ministry based around a, uh, you know, a kill switch where, you know, they, they would end up having, uh, you know, after three days or whatever, if no one touches the, the database, uh, it, it would just send out a swarm of emails to the people who, who, whom you decided to reach out to and your email addresses are all in their database. And it's based off of a template of somebody, you know, of, of a letter that is basically saying, listen, I, you know, this is where I am. This is what I've been explaining about for many you know for a long time you know however long you you know you're speaking to them about yeah. it. and and they you know they receive this letter saying listen I, i'm with the lord right now uh you know this is what you're gonna have to endure this is what you have to go through however at the same time you, you know it's not too late it's not too late to make jesus your lord and savior you can still do that um yeah. and uh that that website i really i don't really promote now only because it used to be something that was just based off of donations it was donation based but now they're actually charging for anyone to actually use their database and i don't know what the reasons or purposes are behind that um you know that's you know that's all based off of them and uh you know and, and what they have with the lord and it's all that so but I thought it was very interesting, very unique way of doing it. Um, I got a bunch of emails in there myself back when it was free, but it is called raptureletters.com and I think it's a very unique way of doing it, but I don't go out of my way to promote it now because if you have to pay for something like that, uh, that kind of turns me turns me away. Um, and I, I really don't think you should be charging people for that. It should be donation based and I love what you're doing here offering it for free. All right, thank you. You know, that, that I, I strongly believe, uh, never have monetized a video. 
on YouTube. I'm, I'm also, I want to mention on other platforms that I recommend people, I would love to see Christians migrate to BitChute, Minds, Gab, uh, and so esteem it, Brighteon. These are independent video uh, uh, hosting sites. A little more rough on the rough side because they're a little more free speech forms, mind you. Um, but I not have not monetized any one of them. And that's because this is a labor of love for the Lord. Uh, you know, God knows that uh, uh, I certainly go to him in forgiveness and repentance quite a bit, to be honest. And uh, this is something, at least I can say, I'm getting this right. The Holy Spirit is moving me. Um, money, I do believe, clouds uh, your your own motivation. It tugs at your heart. So none of this is, this is all, you know, free. Um, I, I love, uh, I personally support Bob Barber's uh, ministry myself, uh, Feed My Sheep Today. I love that. I love the fact that donations to that ministry, and I believe all the donations go to that, are for um, Bibles into people who can't afford them around the world and so forth. That's the sort of thing I would like to see the money go to. But me personally, I have a job. I don't need anybody's, uh, you know, I don't need any financial assistance here. Um, so this is, yeah, a, a labor of love. And I thank you for your kind words for that. Hey, can I Absolutely. ask you something, Greg? Did, what, did I, what did I miss for the five minutes that I was off? I, all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, my screen went, blank and it said it had to redo it and it was just oh so I had well to, I, listen, I just sit here and wait so. you, you didn't listen you he was just he was just telling us exactly what you know okay. about his right. uh his usb drive and how he can how he can receive it okay. uh but obviously these webcasts can be replayed for anyone who misses the live i want to remind people of that <clears throat> uh, we can always be replayed uh back here at the same channel uh so if you miss anything please be sure to download the podcasts Please be sure to, to review uh, the, the recordings, the live recordings. We, we can do that. We, so everything's, everything's recorded. Uh, but yeah, it is, um, it is very interesting to note that what we're dealing with today is, is something that is so profound. And so many people will think that we're absolutely insane, crazy for even thinking that this is really going to, this event is even going to take place. And it's understandable there, you know, we, we as believers even have to have some sort of, some kind of balance in between all of this. And that's a very difficult, difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, because we, we, we were walking with the Lord, but at the same time, we're not of the world, but we're in the world, right? right. We're still dealing with people who just have no idea. This just it will gloss, gloss over their eyes. They will just completely be, you know, look at us like the seven heads. I mean, it's, it's like totally out there i mean right so yeah so um but that's why these packets are very important extremely important because when it does happen it's not if it will happen god's word is truth okay john 17 17 his word is truth and so uh we do i mean the rapture can be looked at as a you know eschatological point of view um but I mean, we've gone over this, hand over fist, we've gone over this numerous times on previous webcasts, guys, and we, we have proven through scripture that there is, in fact, a pre-trib uh, rapture and the, the Lord is coming back for his, his saints um, because he's coming back with saints, right. okay? He's coming back with his call to faithful and chosen. Right. He's coming back with them and he's gathering them in the heavens. Remember in Matthew 24, he's gathering his saints from the heavens, from the four corners of the heavens. Right. So it doesn't say the word there. earth in that Jesus verse. Said, That's correct. Somebody's Jesus up said, there. Jesus said, John, what? For, uh, was it 14? I'm trying to remember. He said, I go to my father's house <laughs> to prepare a place for you. So it's not that that place is prepared after we went through all the hell at, on, on earth. It's a place prepared for the bride, for, for those that believe on that. And you know what's funny? I got an email from a sister in, uh, uh, gosh, I can't remember, but her name was Pam. And um, I've spoken to her a couple of times. But she said that recently she's heard all this, like Schofield with heresy and all these different things about kind of talking about putting down the, the, the doctrine of the rapture. 
And I says, really, just throw all that junk out. There's going to be brothers and sisters in our own, uh, in our own house that believe that we have to go through the, ra- the, the, uh, the tribulation. They believe that. They're prepared. They're prepping. They're, they're preparing to do it. So who am I to, to get all angry at them and, and you know, curse them out? And so you got to believe it. just the same as them getting angry at me and say, you know, there is no rapture. The idea is what do you believe? As a believer in Christ, we have to believe the way we're being led to believe. And my whole, since I was saved, I've always believed once I found out there was a rapture, that's me. That's for me. I'm going in the rapture. Never, and even though I've heard all the arguments against, you know, the, you know, it says that, you know, well, what makes you think that, you know, you're any better than anyone else? You know, the, the disciples, they went through terrible times and tribulation. The bottom line is we're told that in Thessalonians that we are not appointed to the wrath. The wrath is what's coming. It's very obvious. We can see this in the planet X, uh, uh, you know, all the exposés and, and the, 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 the blue beam and the, the UFO stuff and just name it. We're, we're all surrounded by the <laughs> current events. And that's what tells, that's why we can be so excited about this escape because it's a promised. Jesus doesn't take his promises back. When he promises you something, if you believe it, you will be saved. You will be raptured. And if you don't believe it, that's that's in God's hand. I'm not going to say you won't go into rapture because if you have the Holy Spirit, Perhaps you've got something else to do and go through the, the tribulation with the Holy Spirit. I don't know. But the Lord said, you, if when you see all these things begin to happen, and they're happening, look up. Your redemption draws near. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace, O oh Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise and God. And God's, and God's gifts are good, John. Oh, man. You know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't give. He does, oh. He's not an Indian giver. He doesn't take them. And, he doesn't give and take them back. If well, you look at, if you look at, me, I love it. They, he once he yeah. offers that gift and you receive yeah. the gift. He's not an Indian giver. Sorry to say, right? He doesn't take it, back. He promises, and that promise is it's on you. You are saved with His Spirit. When He takes that back, the only way He's taking it back is with you. You're gone. Yeah. In second, <laughs> you guys, real quick, Second Corinthians chapter four, and uh, if you want to look at verses two through four, you know you're talking about. Um, how people don't understand what's going on. It talks about, and here it says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, Amen. should shine unto them. Ooh. It it every time every time a word is spoken, it goes out and it busts open the darkness. Yeah. I mean, we're it says we're lights in the world. I mean, I never thought of myself as being a light, but the word says you that are. we're supposed to be ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You know, we're representing him on earth. That's heavy. Yeah, I mean, why, why me? You know, yeah. you could have picked a whole what, lot better, no more way. educated no people way. than me. But it's, a, it's not according to it's not according to our righteousness. Right. It's according to His righteousness. Exactly. That's why it's a blessing because there's no way we can earn heaven. There's no way we can do enough work to be a certain way. God, <laughs> come on, brother. Well, he knew. <laughs> see, the thing about it, John and everybody, he knew. You know, God knows the people that are going to be faithful. Yes. And it says God is faithful. He's faithful to his word and he's faithful to us. And as I have said before on some of the teachings I've done, he's always been faithful to me through the years. I haven't always been faithful to him. And And if I can continue each day, if we can decide when we get up, hey, today I'm going to be faithful to the Lord. Right. Right. And just work a day at a time and not get too ahead of ourselves. That's right. And and worry about too many things we have no control over. Hallelujah. That's right. The interesting thing is that. It's the same gospel as before. The gospel yeah. hasn't changed. But what's changed is that we're here at the end and that yeah. we're living through what's prophesied. And we, we and we see a dividing line and a point 
of no return, of where things change, yeah. of where everything changes. Yeah. And we see the setup right now through daily events of how it's conditioning the population who's going to remain to attempt to deceive them away from the truth. Right. Because it's that, that is going to be the battle. After mm -hmm. the rapture, the, the battle is for souls at that point. I mean, it is who yeah. is going to take what's like, there's only going to be two sides. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And the saints yeah. are ultimately overcome by the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there is going to be martyrdom. There is not going to be people that that are going to be able to go and kill the Antichrist and overcome the Antichrist. That's just not Jesus does that. And right. we return with him. And and if we who are who, who are alive and remain have to go through that and, and not and be overcome by the Antichrist, then who's alive and remaining? There isn't anybody. The only ones who are left are the ones who are sealed, the 144,000, and the remnant of Israel who who's not going to be raptured. I mean, they're, they're part of the millennium. Um, so, so there are only certain groups that, 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 that are there. And right now, John, I think you guys really pointed it out very well that there is a dividing line right now. And we are the light. We are the salt of the earth. We have been taken out of the, of the world system. And has have been placed as watchers and as you know relayers of the of the true gospel, the word. And when you look around and you see people here on the channel and they're 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 giving their comments, that's awesome. That's so great because they've been picked out of the world too. Yeah. I mean, we we are not part of that system. That's right. And yeah. we and, and we're we we do not have to go through the trial of that system either. Yeah. That's clearly presented in to the Church of Philadelphia in Revelation 3:10. Amen. It doesn't make it more clear that if you're able to overcome the world system, you yeah. will be saved. There is the world system, which is Satan and all the other bad things, the harlot system, and then the beast system, and then there's Jesus. I mean, there that's it. Yeah. So so you decide which one you pick, and determining on when you pick it, as we see in the parable of the ten virgins, different things happen to different groups. Yeah. That mm -hmm. if you're ready and you have the oil in your lamp. So you're going to go through the door. That's right. If you're not right. ready, you're going to be cast into outer darkness with the hypocrites, and you're going to have to try to figure it out. It's going to be tough. But there are people who are going to be able to overcome that, and there are people who are going to be saved. Jesus has if, overcome. Yeah. yeah. If you're saved today and you're like, well, I think I want to go through the tribulation and be saved then. Well, you're already saved. Yeah. Whether or not God says, well, Okay, yeah. fine. You get the pigeon. You you get the bad meat. It's gonna taste good at first, but then when you're in the tribulation, boy, that's gonna be sour to your stomach. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. if you think it's gonna be all hunky dory and you're gonna take your guns and, and ammo and you're gonna be you know wild west in it, no, I think that's gonna leave a sour taste. It's gonna be a whole other story. Yeah. yeah. Now, what, now you're probably saved. I mean, you're saved. Th those who are saved are going to go through and be killed for their faith. Right. There will be um, you can be killed for your faith today. There was over 1,000 people that were killed in Nigeria. 1,345 Christians were killed in Nigeria just recently through massive massacres and raids of churches. That's mm -hmm. what's happening in our world today. Yeah. If you don't think that that's going to spread throughout the world one day, well, then you haven't read the mm -hmm. Revelation because Revelation clearly yeah. states that it will. And we see the setup for that. You know, uh, you guys seen that video from Black Lives Matter? That woman, they're, they're, they're starting to narrow their attacks. Now, these demons that are leading these people. They're narrowing their attacks. Yeah, I started <laughs> off uh, protesting for Black Lives Matter and all stuff like that. But I saw a video just recently. They're asking people now whether or not they're Christians. They don't care about black lives. They don't care about... The, the They don't care about anything else now other than the the fact that you're a the Christian. Like, are you a Christian? I'm going to kill you if you're a christian yeah and that's here in the united states yeah well what happened yesterday was that somebody was running down the street and they said hey that's a trump supporter shot and killed oh, him. yeah 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 that oh, okay so yeah. now they're out there murdering people suspected mm -hmm. to vote for trump in the future yeah i mean th this is like well, this is all been talk. What, what is this th this is nuts this is you know lawlessness at its ultimate level when you're out murdering people you think are going to vote for the person you don't like that's yeah i, I don't know i don't know where you can go from there I mean, yeah. that is just lawlessness and it's occurring on the streets of certain cities if you notice mm -hmm. and yeah. i think we all noticed that raymond 
I think the I like to have you talk about your perspective on the coming election if it actually occurs. <laughs> There's all yeah. kinds of theories of whether or not it's going to occur based on the rapture. How about asteroids? Planet X. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you name it. Alien invasion. Joe Biden is a clone. Uh, you know, <laughs> you name it. There's all kinds of deception going on. Joe Biden isn't going to be the president. Hillary Clinton's going to come in last second. I mean, yes, Michelle yeah. Obama's going to run. Mm -hmm. who, who, what to believe? Who, what to know? I mean, really, Raymond, can you just try to sum it up for us? <laughs> oh, guys, well, um, I, I've really learned a question. To, to be cautious, having watched and thought that uh, 2011 and 2012 would be a high rapture watch time, I've learned to, to have a little bit of discernment and, and a lot more patience than before. And as it unfolds, I, I'm, I'm aware of the, the, the possibility that we're going through an asteroid belt uh, and so forth uh, and uh, what can happen there. I do believe that the Lord moved uh, Pastor Dana Coverstone with that vision. It, it went viral, and I don't think that was by accident. Millions of people saw the pastor from Kentucky talk about um, a prophetic hand in a vision or a dream that he had pointing to September, then October, and then November, the calendar gets smashed. Yeah. And we, we, he, he had that back in December. Now we're actually hearing of the fruition that the, the pieces are taking place where there will be an on- going protest in Washington, D.C., again, more of these Antifa-style radicals uh, are going to have a, like a, be around the White House uh, starting in mid-September. And you know they're not going to be peaceful. It's not going to be there. It does not surprise me that they are going after Christians. It, I have a, a video on my channel, again, just copy from other people and just spreading the word. Uh, it has been recently exposed that three of the main co-founders of Black Lives Matters are actual practicing witches, uh, occultists from, have a particular West African type of occult practice that they have, channeling spirits, which we know is divination, which is absolutely unbiblical and demonic. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, so it doesn't surprise me if you look at the Black Lives Matter website, and this was in J.D. Farag's video, uh, they're against the nuclear family. They're against fathers. And nothing, I think, has hurt the black community more than the absence of fathers. It's fostered by government as well as society and so forth. There's so many reasons why. But one of the biggest solutions to in empowering and elevating African Americans in this country would be to get fathers to be with and incorporate them back into black families and so forth. So it's very interesting that Black Lives Matter does not mention that. They do not mention all the deaths caused, not by police officers, not by people of other races, but the vast majority from within their own community. They don't mention uh, abortions and so forth. Uh, and that is the biggest cause of death among African Americans of any uh, cause whatsoever is uh, abortion. And you add it all up, you can see- You know who's speaking out, you know who's speaking out the most uh, on that, Raymond? Yeah. Is uh, is black men? Yes, the, 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 they're the ones who are actually speaking out the loudest against Black Lives Matter yeah. and what they stand for, and and they're the only ones who are actually bringing up those things. Yes. Black lives. The the, the 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 mainstream media is certainly not. The mainstream media is is, is um, positioning them as peaceful protesters that don't like police brutality. But as yeah. you pointed out, there's a there's much more underneath that uh, liberal. Yeah surface isn't there yes and and then you, to add a bigger layer to it uh to move in a, a larger perspective um you have people like george soros that are funding this that he has uh worked in the ukraine and other places to destabilize governments that did not share the globalist perspective he does not like nationalism people say that he himself is just a figurehead or the front for even wealthier more powerful uh, interests, and I believe that might, that might be the case, which this is now their push. You cannot have this antichrist system, this one world, new world order, unless America is taken down. And so you have nothing less than an active attempt to destroy America. Joe Biden, I don't think yeah, he knows President Trump on. speak about George Soros a couple weeks ago? 
he he mentioned they 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 said where do you think this is coming from and he said well, i don't know it's possible george i've heard george soros's name i mean that, that's how trump puts it out there like and he says <laughs> I, I heard this and uh yes, yes. And then he's like well we'll see what happens you know that, that that's that, that's not our trumpism um it's yes yes it's interesting to see like just in the last month, I believe, support for Black Lives Matter in Wisconsin has gone from a plus 25 to an even. Yeah. So that's the good news, right? It seems like the tide is turning because these voices actually have come out and educated America on what Black Lives Matter, the group of what it stands for, and where their dollars go to act blue in order to fund progressive campaigns and liberals who, who are... And let's be honest, pretty much almost everybody is a Democrat. Jeff Van Drew bailed out on the Democrats because he couldn't handle it anymore. That that that, that party is only for certain things. You you have to be pro-abortion. You must be anti-God in anything. You have you can't even yeah. say God in the Pledge of Allegiance anymore if you're a Democrat. So a, the Democrats, man. You know, and you know, yeah. Black Lives Matter is the biggest anti-black organization on the earth, obviously. And, and you know, that, that's just that's just what they do. You accuse the enemy of what you're doing, and they're okay. speaking out against them. They're starting right. to do that, and you're starting to see the tide turn. You're right. starting and to people, see, you know, logical minds start going. Wait a minute, what, why would we support people who who, who fund abortions? Who are and they and they and they kill as many black babies than they do are born every year. Right. How is that? How is that going to? If they really think Black Lives Matter, don't those Black Lives Matter as well? I just saw a poll: seventy-three percent of Americans think all lives matter is better slogan than twenty-seven percent who think Black Lives Matter is a better slogan. I think all lives matter is a better slogan. I'm in that 73%. I don't know about you guys, but I think Jesus would be in the all lives matter movement as well. I mean, he, he died for everyone, not just a certain group. Mm -hmm. And you know what's even more important? Why do you, why have this racial thing anyway? Why focus on it? If you focus on it, it becomes more of an issue. Yes, there are issues that have to be dealt with. But when you start saying, well, we do this and we are going to be this and you can't, all of a sudden now you've turned it into a battleground. And I think the American people are starting to see that. Yeah. Right. There, guys, there is a there is a revival going on uh, throughout America in small, small groups. But there's a guy by the name of Sean Fight, F-E-U-C-H-T. And he's going, I think he's from California, but he's traveling around the country. Uh, the other day they were in New Jersey and last night they were in Washington Square. They're baptizing people. This is like a move of the Holy Spirit. This guy's headed to Chicago this uh, tomorrow or today or whatever, but he's traveling around and then back to uh, California. Th this is going on. The, the Lord is pouring out his spirit. And I'm going to tell you something before uh, uh, Brother Kevin, when you were saying uh, the change, there's a change coming. Well, this change is starting to be felt in the spirit. The spirit is, is I said in my video the other day, the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit is now empowering us and, and blessing us in ways that are un, unknown to oh, I can't. I, listen, I can't agree with you more. And the reason why I can't agree with you more is because I'm seeing videos from people who said, I never thought I would ever do this. I never thought I would ever say this. I mean, yeah. but I have to proclaim the Lord and Savior as my, you know, Jesus Christ is my Savior. I mean, yeah. how do you explain that other other than, you know, a last day's falling away and rebellion of certain people and, and a last day's pouring out of the spirit for the people who yeah. God's chosen? Amen. I mean, we're seeing it unfold right before our very eyes. And we're seeing a turn here a little bit. And, and Raymond, maybe you could speak about some of the things that are going on in California regarding worship services and how the tide is possibly turning there against, um, as L.A. Marzulli would call him, Governor Gruesome. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. You know, I have the privilege of now I attend Calvary Chapel Chino Hills in, in Chino Hills with Pastor Jack Hibbs. And it is one of the only churches uh, that are fully open uh, for services, three services, thousands 
a full uh, sanctuary, and uh, Jack Hibbs has three services, and then they have midweek Bible study and so forth. And we have other churches as well. They're being very trepid. The, the government in California has been very heavy-handed. We have all gyms closed, all salons closed, uh, small businesses, unless you can have a, a little bit of a presence outside. It's really geared towards uh, hampering small businesses. I, I believe that small businesses are meant to, in the long run, be shut down. And that will mean that Walmarts and the Giants that are very cooperative with the, the power structure, the new world order and so forth, they can remain. And so that, that will just facilitate the, um, the control. Uh, but uh, in terms of California- We talked about that last week. The, yes. The, the, the Walmart pr production and, and how the elites are going to, uh, you know, rely on a lot of those, those big businesses to supply them for what they need to try to persevere through yeah. uh, what's to come and what they know is coming upon the earth. Can, can I just ask a couple of questions? I want to ask some questions that, that it might be telling. So, um, can, yeah. So uh, Calvary Chapel is, we've spoken about a falling away of some groups of so-called Christianity, right? We've talked yeah. about that in the past. Calvary Chapel, though, is not one of those groups. Calvary Chapel, in, in, uh, in my belief, from what I have, all I've seen from them has just been spirit-filled, you know, yeah. absolutely. Sure, you're going to have some opinions from certain people here and there, yeah. but they teach the word. They also teach prophetic. They also teach that we're in the end times. They absolutely put it together. I want to make clear that I'm I'm, I'm glad you you mentioned that because my question to you though is: Aren't there other denominations that are in California that aren't opening and actually don't necessarily want to open and have no inclination to actually open at this point? There is a I think there's a line between certain denominations and certain groups of people on how much they're actually standing up against this. Yes. Um, right now, uh, most, I would say most churches are still closed and I've badgered a few of my former pastors because I've hopped around from church to church trying to find one that talks about end times Bible prophecy. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of them are still shut. And uh, I really believe this is where we have to be engaged with the world and not not entrenched in the world, but engaged in the world. And one of the ways uh, we can show that is by going to church and demanding that the service be open. This is the evil we see around us now, the chaos, has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of Christians are not going to church and praying. And I don't know how people's prayer lives are, but I'm, I'm certain certain people are like when if there's not church service, they just wait for the next service or they might catch something online. But it's not the same as having a, a room full or a church full of spirit filled Christians praising the Lord at the same time. When that's gone, evil abounds. I, I think we need to be praying, praying against the spiritual warfare going on in our communities now and constantly. And Christians have to now decide. Find a church that's open. If you're in California, New York, or somewhere that's shut down, we have a blue governor that seems, forgive me, hell-bent on destroying the church in their state, and as, as well as looking the other way as riots and protests and so forth develop and chaos. Um, yeah. You need to go to church. Demand that your pastor, don't make it easy on for the pastor to worm his way out of, uh, you know, say, the body of Christ needs to be worshiping. We need to be worshiping together. Online served its purpose. We waited three months. The curve has been flattened. Um, we, if it's outdoors, let it be outdoors, but let's do this. Um, I would think if, at this point it has nothing to really do with safety. It has more to do with whether or not the church is alive or dead. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's you what know, it appears to me is that if the church is alive, the church doesn't want to shut down, right? The church wants to right. keep going. church wants to bring more people in. And wants to do it as safely as possible, but those who are dead, they just lay yeah. down and go to sleep, and then and, right. and then they don't even bother. I mean, that that's that's really kind of what I'm seeing. You know, the interesting thing I received this morning in prayer was um, the Lord showed me that the, the percentages of people who are actually speaking about the end times, like what we're all of us here are doing right now, 
Okay, and what you're trying to find a church, Raymond, that speaks about the end times as actually addressing what's happening now. That's important. Yes, we know God is good and alive, our best life yet, and all this stuff like that, and how we should operate our lives that we normally get from our normal churches. But they're not addressing the fact that this is a fight we're going into. And the Lord showed me the percentages of the the percentages of people who are actually speaking it. As far as a percentage that we're looking at of people who, who know about the end times that the Bible talks about, it's only about 3% of the church. Wow. And it's only about 1% of the church are actually speaking against, like the six of us here. We are part of 1% of the people actually speaking here on YouTube, or maybe a handful of pastors on their pulpits speaking about this stuff now directly addressing it how the new world order is trying to take over and directly like i mean we're getting into some deep stuff here like rabbit holes all over the place yeah. that no pastors are going anywhere near no. okay no. Oh, yeah. i don't well, think you're going to find thinking. a church that's going to get all these touch in the stuff right? yeah they're, they're all individual people they're all different kinds of people and they all talk about little different things but we're all like the same same body I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're all we're, we're we're not looking for aliens to save us. We're not looking, you know, yeah. for for those things. We're our all our minds are on Jesus, and all our hearts are on Jesus and the coming, uh, you know, rapture. I mean, and yeah. in the meantime, letting people know that the, these are delusions. When you're seeing this, this is a distraction. The, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, this over here, this is all this is trying to do is trying to change your mind about something and trying to make you think something is that's not true. Yeah. And so you're when you're seeing that deception play out all the time, and then you see more and more people like us just pop up, and all of a sudden they have an, a video, and all of a sudden they do another video. You're seeing, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I've ever seen so many people say exactly what you're saying, which is, look what's coming. We see what's coming, and their all foundation is based on faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the common threat. And you got about three, you got about a billion people. What's the, what's the number of Christians in the world? Supposed Christians, like just over a billion, something like that. I can't remember. I know, I know there's not a billion channels on YouTube speaking right now. I know that. Yeah, it's like between a billion and two billion, if if you count. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah, the, the one one point something billion in Catholics. There are. Right. Yeah. And my, and the majority of my family is Catholic, Muslims, or something like that. One point eight yeah. to almost two billion now. Yeah, and the funny is, I come from a Catholic family, and I just went to a family function, and I'm sitting, I'm sitting in a room for all these Catholics, like 15 of them. And when mm -hmm. I start talking, like what I talk about with you guys, they yeah. look at me like I like I have a telephone pole sticking <laughs> on my head. <laughs> They're like, "What are you talking about, man?" Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Right." And when they talk to you about the rosary and about all these prayers and oh, yeah. the archangel and this angel and that you're, you're like you look at them like they got a telephone pole hanging out of there yeah. like we're oh, yeah. you know I don't pray for each other they're all they're all you know they 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 don't have the relationship that's the important thing relationship 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 you know, yeah. not religion, chip, relationship. We know uh, the first Jesus in the, uh, out the Jewish for. He called them out for hypocrisy. He said, right. "You guys are hypocrites. You guys, you you guys think you're religious. You're doing all the right things, right? But inside, you're just dirt." And it's just like when, the healings, Kevin. You know, when it, it, no matter when when Jesus would heal somebody, or during his ministry, and when Paul, you know, uh, Peter and John healed the man at the temple gate. I mean, they. They weren't worried about what day of the week it was that they were healing them, but the Pharisees and the Sadducees were always concerned about what day of the week it was. Yeah, whether it was with their blessings. That's right. And Jesus, one of the why things I'm wearing I your mask while you're yeah, healing. I shared. Yeah. yeah, he should have been wearing a mask. But why were why, um, why was Jesus <laughs> wearing a mask? But he. That's what they would have said. Oh, and he was yeah. six feet apart when he touched his eyes. Come on he now, where's the social distancing? Well, one of the things that I love cool. about the Lord is that he. You know, especially when the man born blind, my one of my favorite chapters in the word, because they, you know, he, he heals this guy and these guys are hammering them, constantly saying, who healed you? Who healed you? Yeah, and he exactly. says, I, I was healed by this man. And, you know, this is what he did. If I, I keep telling you, and if I, if, are you going to become his disciples? I love it when he said that. Yeah. And then they finally put him out of the synagogue, which was a big deal back then. And then Jesus appeared appeared to him told him it was him and that he could go you know go on and he would be made whole 
Right. I mean, it's just it's fascinating so, so you, when you think you, about that. Do you think that conversion kind of compares to stuff today where the FBI takes you in and says, you know what, we're going to make this guy lie because we don't like him. And then they're like, and he's like, no, I, how can I lie? All, all I did was do my job. And like, like the guy said, and all of a sudden they, they cast him out and they're like, you know, <laughs> you see all these parallels today, how, yeah. how the world back then is the same as it is now. I mean, it is just these people in power who who want to push you down and make themselves look good. I mean, this is like virtual signaling was happening back in, in Jesus' time. Not, if they hated him, they're going to hate you too because you are against that system. You do not want to be part of that world. Right? Well, just the fact that we believe that God still is operating the way he did and after yeah. the day of Pentecost, it's it puts you in. You know, Bob just saying that. You know, they act like you got a you're you're nuts when you start talking about this stuff. You shouldn't mm -hmm. worry about that because you know the word says that we're we're a peculiar people and we're yeah. we're aliens on this earth. You know, and it, the, this is going to be the way it is. But whenever we speak the word, whenever you know we do it with. The, you know, the love of God calls a man to repent. It's not fear. You know, you can't scare people into believing. It just doesn't work. But if you do it, you know, you like each day you say, Lord, I'd like to be able to minister to somebody today. Put somebody in my path. My, my wife and I pray that every morning. And a lot of times it may not be someone that comes right up and says, I want to hear about Jesus. But it's your actions, you know. Raymond, you know, they see how you act. Uh, you know, Kevin and, and, uh, and Bob and John and Greg, they see how we live. And, and that's the that's the witness. And then as far as the churches go, if you have to have a fellowship in your home, at least you're having a fellowship. Invite people over. Maybe, ha you know, we did home fellowships for three and a half years, years ago in California. And we used to have people over a couple, you know, we'd have them over once a week and then we'd do other things with them. But at least, like I, I agree with Ray, at least do something. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, yeah, don't be don't afraid, be afraid to, to get afraid together. Don't a track or... You know, yeah. I always I, I always make sure I got tracks in my car and, you know, in the glove box and kicking around, you know, wherever in my pocket. A lot of times you don't want to keep them in your pocket. They'll go bent up and you're handing somebody a crinkled piece of paper, you know. <laughs> um, just the other night, there was like these four guys, four kids. They would come skateboarding up and they were sitting down at a table, going to have some pizza or something. And I got it out of the car and I went to give them a track and they said, Thank you, brother. And I was like, wow, I figured these kids, because I'm looking at them like, oh, yeah, they need saving. They were already saved. They're already they're thanking me, praising God. You know, I says, well, you know, God bless you. You know, God bless you. You know, so we are seeing a lot of people that are, are, are evangelizing, talking right. about their faith a lot more. I think people are seeing that. And to build upon what you were talking about, uh, Robert, was that, that we don't we don't fear the, 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 the death of men. We right. fear the second death. <laughs> that's the, right. we, you don't want to be a part of the second death you want to be a part of the first resurrection that's right and the resurrection to life is 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 through god and through his son yeah. jesus christ Hallelujah. and and what's interesting is we we don't we we see the other side and the people who are on the other side but we also understand that we don't fight against flesh and blood we're fighting against principalities yeah. and demons and and yeah. rulers of dark places yeah and they're the ones who set the agenda for the satanic regime that is all part mm -hmm. of the Antichrist system, of course, to come. But it's the Antichrist has been in the world forever. I mean, since right. since the fall of man. I mean, to be honest with you, that is the spirit of anti-redemption, anti-Jesus, anti-Christ. In place of, right? In place of. Yeah, in place of. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's the lead up that we're seeing to today. But we don't the people who who don't believe, we 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 want them to come to Christ. We don't want them to die. We don't want them to suffer and, and die. We want them to come to Christ because those people are are filled with spirits that that are are dark. That they are that they've got they've gotten a hold on them, and that that's like the seeds, right? That are planted, and some people just get snatched away, and they and and, and they do that. But it's our job to try to you know try to snatch them back out of there. If we can, and we try to do that through talking with hopefully something that's actually pertinent to what today is, rather than saying we're going to read from First Samuel ten twenty one, stand up. You know, those type of churches are dying and are dead. But if you go to a Calvary Chapel church and they're praising the Lord and they're talking about what we're kind of talking about, which is 
look what's happening today. You, yeah, you got to pick a side. You got to choose. It's nowadays, right nowadays, you don't even need to really go to church. I mean, that there's a lot of us can't go to church because we just don't have a church to go to. But yeah. but that's the beauty of the internet. You can mm -hmm. you can get podcasts. You can listen to things. You can uh, seek you know the word right on the right on the internet. If you don't have a Bible, you can. If you if you got the internet, you can pull up a Bible. Many there's different plenty content. Yeah. There's plenty of content. There's plenty of content talking about the rapture, about that's the tribulation. In the end, in the Go end, college, and that's what I love about that packet he has. He has videos on there, and I'm sorry, I got cut up when you're talking about that whole thing, Raymond. My 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 internet went ballistic. I, I but evidently, it. there's something, and I know I'm working with Raymond on this whole project. Mine and uh, I know there's something to what you're doing to hear. There's already, as soon as you start talking about that rapture packet, <laughs> bam, we'll see what happens to my internet connection now. Yeah. But uh, it's like, because you're so popular, man. I love the physical <laughs> medium you're going to do it in because people right now are thinking digital cloud, all that stuff, you know, and nobody's really ta talking about floppy disks or CD ROMs or yeah, oh, yeah. drives and things like that. Everyone's talking about the cloud, but what happens when the cloud goes down? Yeah. What right. happens when all you have is your machine and you do have yes. electricity, but then you don't have a way yeah, to actually these. access anything unless you yes. physically have a medium like that. Yeah. And yes. those are, those are able to be copied and uh, to yes. another physical medium. So uh, I, I'm very, I'm very yes. pleased to see that, that, that there are people out there that are thinking about what happens when the day when we're not able to yes. download. All right. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that, say, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. You, okay, I was just gonna say it's the first volley in. I see the 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 tribulation being so close. This is the first volley. This is our attempt to say to the Antichrist, "No, you, you, we are, we're going to fight you all the way, and we're pre-positioning the assets, the the Bible, the Word of God, uh, the the weapons of spiritual warfare now, so that those that come to to the knowledge and saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the tribulation." will have what they need, at least the beginning steps. There's, I, I don't, there's not advanced Bible study here, but the, there is the Bible. There are Bible study guides. I would call this Christianity and Salvation 101 and maybe 102. It, 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 that's you know, all you it, need it, there during that period of time, right? He says, yes, whoever yes. calls upon my name will be saved. It doesn't say Amen whoever's gone through seminary and has figured out this <laughs> and that. It says, <laughs> if you believe on me, you will, you will be saved. And if that's what you're providing, which it seems like it is, we're not going to lay down here during this time. And, and that's not a fair fight. I mean, we're just going to let the devil win? No. I mean, right. we're going to yeah. help get as many to Christ as we possibly can. And if that's through whatever medium we can get there, we're going to mm -hmm. take advantage of that up until the day we are taken. You know, on this, on this flash drive, I went through all the files. And a lot of stuff in here, especially like a nice opening letter that explains the whole thing. It shows you where you get all the tags. You can print all the tags off it. It has videos, tons and tons of videos on here. Awesome. Saves you can, people that don't like to read. You can just watch the videos, get the information. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's absolutely the super most all inclusive piece of information anybody would ever need. I don't think you missed a single speck of what people will need for after the rapture resurrection. I think everything they'll ever possibly need, they'll cover it all, is right here on this flash drive. And you can get one of these for free. Like I said, if it's one of, go to his email. You get one of these for free. And I'm so thankful that you did this because I, from looking at it, that's a lot of work. That was a lot of work go, finding all this stuff and putting it on here. So thank you so much, Raymond, for doing this work. That's amazing. Okay, we're going to try to get as many of these out as possible. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Robert. Um, you know, one thing that occurred to me, and I'm just, I'm, I'm going to keep it short. Um, we were talking about people that Kevin was, you know, people were out there sharing the word and, you know, we're trying to bring as many people into the family of God as we can at this day and time. But, you know, when people believe and they come to a knowledge of the truth, they're going to learn a certain way. Not, you know, they may learn from us, they may learn, but the Lord is going to be, you know, the Holy Spirit, Christ in them. I mean, that's how they, you know, the natural man is not going to receive the things of the Spirit of God. But once they have that Holy Spirit within them and they start getting their heads into this book, they start to read it. They'll start to understand it. and It'll make sense to them. It didn't make a lot of sense to that, the Samaritan woman, that Jesus was asking for a drink. See, 
what in the world are you talking about? But after a while, it started to make sense to her. You know, it's just the way it's just the way it works. And, you know, you when you ask the Lord to teach you something, he'll teach you. Buckle up Amen. because you got to be ready for it. Amen. And, a, and a lot of Amen. times, you know, like you guys are a whole lot more knowledgeable than I am. I mean, I'm sitting here. I, I know. Okay, you, Robert. I, I know. I know. <laughs> so you, modest. No. <laughs> so modest. Well, I know a few things. But I'm just, about all you know, you know, not all the technical stuff, but but at the same time, it's 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 great to actually be able to do something. It's beneficial for people. You know, my life before I became a believer was not beneficial for people. And maybe many times it's since it's been up and down. But at the same time, I know that, you know, you, we can take people from from actually from death unto life. And that's, you know, you, you think about raising somebody from the dead. I think I spoke about this a few weeks ago. When you when you are able to lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're taking them from death unto life. Yeah. And that is a big deal, you guys. You're not kidding. That I mean, is, the yeah. angels rejoice in heaven when that happens. They it's have a yeah. blessing for us. It's it's like when you have the spirit of God in you, what what you do with the spirit is all a blessing. All good and perfect gifts come from the Father above. That's when we receive. And if we really truly in our heart receive it, there's nothing we can't do. And that's that's some that's beyond understanding we don't understand the power of what god and he's gonna he is even now pouring out his spirit i'm telling you it's happening really so i can attest to when, when you have the same when you but when you have that in you you have that same love and you don't yeah. want people to perish right yeah that, i mean that, that's, that's what god you know i don't I, god's no one should perish and so if you have that same feeling and that same love for humanity yeah. You don't want them to suffer and perish and you want them to, to come to know the truth because yeah. I mean, the other side looks so pretty, you know, it's like yeah. they, they, they've shined yeah. it in light and they, yeah. they just put it in all the different deceptions yeah. and the different types of things that try to distract you. All this is a big bill, so big bad. billboard that falls over. You're taking down a statue until it falls off and clobbers the guy in the head, he has to be taken into the hospital. Yeah, right. It's not fun. It's not good. It, I mean, that's just one thing. But I'm talking about the overall picture right. that it might look like it's a good way to go because the world will accept you and you won't get challenged, you won't get doxxed, you won't get this and that. But really, is that what's important? Is that where your salvation lies? It can't. You can't. It can't your salvation can't lie in the world to provide you with that or for your government or for a, a, a future world leader for that, for example, or from aliens from space. You cannot rely on them. Right. They're not gonna save you. You see what oh, I've got here, Greg? Do you, yeah. guys, do you guys see that? Yeah. Sure do. Right. Yeah. That's from, that's from Revelation 14, chapter 14, verse six. Yeah. I'm gonna read it out. <clears throat> this is because this is how much our heavenly father really wants yeah. people to understand the eternal gospel. The everlasting gospel, okay, message even during yeah, the, the tribulation, tribulation period right. when the ecclesia or the assembly is right. already taken out, okay. Revelation 14 6 And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, verse 7. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come mm -hmm. and worship him that made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Hallelujah. Now, yeah. now yeah. just think about that for a second, because he has an angel specifically yeah. designated to speak to every nation, kindred and tongue and people. Everyone's going to hear it. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. At that and, time. and notice what the and notice what the message is. The message is that he's the creator. Is that 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 he's the one who actually made it. You need to worship him, not this other entity right. that didn't make Jack Squat. Right. And I mean, that's that's really the, the you know the, the people will say oh evolution or people will say panspermia. People will say all kinds of things, but this is the clear message is that he created everything and you're to worship him. Amen. That's right. You, you know, what I love about this verse is the fact that the, there's an angel flying through the midst of heaven 
and preach an everlasting gospel. First, first of all, this angel will not be censored. You will not be able to shut this angel up. You oh, won't man. be able to stop him because Christians during this time will not be able to preach because they're going to be, well, they will, but they won't get that far and they're going to be getting killed all the time. But you won't be able to stop this angel. This angel will be able to reach everybody. And it's right here in the word. Every, every nation, every kindred tongue, people. This angel is going to be everyone. gospel message. Amen. Do you guys, how about thinking of this idea? Do you guys think that this angel might be Jesus Christ himself? Because isn't he already uh, reaching the I, Muslims already? What do you think? Uh, I, because it mentions angel, I think it's an I think it's a designated angel. I don't think it's the Lord himself. Okay. I think he actually it has an angel of the Lord, which would give it a a better chance. I think in that in that in that place. But uh, but yeah, I, I agree. I think it's I think it's an angel. I hey guys, Gabriel, can I answer Gabriel? Here? Did, Could did, be any of them. I mean, but but the point I think is that is that he, there are people. Here's the most distressing point of this: is that yes, this is going to happen, but there are going to be many who still blaspheme God. It's right. it's unbelievable. I mean, can you imagine that? That's that's how that's where our heart is right now. Is that we can't even possibly imagine blaspheming God now let alone an angel telling us the, this. I mean, right. that's mm -hmm. pretty, much, you're pretty much down the road all the way there at that point when you're cursing God and blaspheming an angel that's preaching the gospel. Brother Kevin, I used this in my, in my uh, video the other day, but this is in John 4, 23, where it says, but the hour cometh, He's, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well with the five husbands and all that, right? And, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers, those who worship in spirit, the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, in the spirit, that's not the flesh, in the spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, that just brings it home, right? I mean... From what the, the angel is saying at that time during the tribulation, you know, and he's also telling people not to take the mark. That's also in there. Mm -hmm. and that's how much God loves his creation. So, see, when we look at others and we think, oh, they're going to go to, you know, they're bad. They're going to not one of us. What makes us any different than anyone else is that we have the grace of God. We have been saved and filled with his spirit and sealed for that day. And yep. until that day comes, which is very short or very whatever, it's close. When that day comes and you're a believer that you are going to escape all these things because you believe the word of Christ, we're gone. Right. But what we're looking on the screen is about the angel talking and, and it's God's um God's love still even during extreme trial and that's going to be a tribulation beyond man's knowledge at that time well doesn't the angel also bless the people who give up their lives for, yeah. for their faith bless I mean those that die in, in more you know for the for the for the name of Jesus for the time from, they hold and it says from this point forward you, you to basically what we're looking at from this point which yeah. means something had to happen, a uh, dramatic <laughs> event had to happen before that point. Good point. Which will have to be the rapture yeah. resurrection because yeah. this this gospel right here, we're not being preached the eternal gospel right now because mm -hmm. we're under the gospel of Paul. Right. So this gospel here is coming to us from an angel. And right. didn't our apostle Paul tell us if an angel of light came and gave right. you another gospel what we right. preach, may he ever be accursed? Right, right. So this cannot be for us. In the age of grace. It's right. for the tribulation saints. Right. That's correct. And this angel is released during the tribulation after rapture resurrection because we're not here to receive this. Because if that was the case, then that would mean that the gift that the Lord gave us for our salvation yeah. would become known void. Because yeah. now we're working for our salvation by <laughs> running away from the mark of the beast. Right. And, no, that, and, that, and that, may, that may be the coming delusion that, yeah. that is, is, is a light of the demonic forces that show themselves as light right and so if they, if they come in that message and the pope says well i'll be baptized with them if they know more about god than i do well i mean i'm not going to go that way uh, if i if, <laughs> right. if i see any kind of angel light at this point i'm not i'm i know it's from the devil himself that yeah the, the next entity that i'm looking for is jesus Amen. in the sky yes, and so i'm to look up 
Because my redemption draws there. If they land on the earth and start talking to me, saying I'm your savior, that's a problem. That's not what the Bible speaks. Let us bring the egg starting video in the beginning of this this, uh, production here. The video is pointing. Everybody is looking at their tablets or the computer screen or whatever. And what does the Bible say? Look up. So that's right. and that aliens Amen. here to save Amen. us. And everyone's right. reading it, right? No one's looking up at Jesus saying, Hey, I'm here calling the trumpet. <laughs> They're looking down, going, Boy, I hope these guys can save us. Well, no, I'm not. Hey, I'd like to I'd like to share two verses with you guys. Go ahead. Probably. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment mm. with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm. I mean, just pretty much what you've been talking about. The whole matter is to fear God and keep his commandments, respect, reverence God, and to yeah. keep his commandments. And they're not grievous commandments. See, the, 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 a lot of r- what religion does is it puts so much, so many burdens on people. I think religion yeah. is one of the cruelest things in the world. Right. Yeah. It just, you know, all these, there, there's nothing wrong yeah. with being disciplined, but when you have all these things that you have to do in order for God to accept you, I, and I, I'm never going to make it. Yeah. Forget it. I mean, if it's not grace, it's not going to work. Right. But you don't want to live your life so, you know, I'm, I'm saved so now I can go out and raise all kinds of H. It doesn't really matter. Or we should endeavor. But faith to, not works is dead, yeah, right? we should endeavor to walk with Jesus Christ. You know, I mean, it's a walk. And I said in that last teaching I did, it's not a run or a sprint or a marathon. It's a walk. It's a day. It's a daily type thing. I mean, we all have things that we're going to be doing this week. What are we going to, how are we going to decide to, to, to walk tomorrow. Right. You know, are we just going to say the heck with it? You know, there's been times recently where I've, I've just wondered why certain things haven't happened as far as the healings that I need in my, in my physical mm-hmm. body. But you know what? I'm still going to endeavor to be faithful to God Amen. because I don't think he's just all of a sudden shut me off. Amen. He hasn't. Which, mm-hmm. if there's people out there listening to this, if you think that God has shut you off, or you think you've got to the point where you're not, you're too bad to, to be saved. <laughs> Just there are some I could tell you stories about people that you wouldn't even believe. It's just amazing, you know, how the Lord takes people with these brick hard hearts and just he could soften them. And it's the, it's the, by the love of God. You know, each of us has strengths that the other one needs, and that's how the body's is supposed to be. You know, it talks about that in Ephesians. Thank you. How we all, you know, how it all blends together. It's kind of, it's really, it's, it's a neat thing. It's really, I mean, it's something you should want to be a part of. I think. When we're glorified, we're, we're all going to be equal. The, you know, you know who Christ said he hates? He hates the Nicolaitans. You know who the Nicolaitans are? The Nicolaitans were these people who had a whole bunch of rules and, and they became the leaders and they, they were basically worshiped almost. And he hates that. And, and, and look at you see what the church has become, that I'm this and then I'm more powerful. It's all about power. And you see what the government's become and how they're oppressing the people. It's all about power. That's why Jesus hates that. When we're all in heaven, we were all sinners, but we are sinners no more. So we are all equal and we are all like him at that point. So well, I agree with you, Robert. Today, if you think that you've got something that's just not going to be able to be redeemable, Oh my goodness. No. The Bible that's, says over and over that that's simply not true, that Jesus is there for you regardless of what you've done. And if you accept it, you get it. That if you knock, the door will be opened. It's not maybe, it right. is will. It's God it's back is always, yeah. always open, not just for yeah. a bit of time two years ago, or it's always his door. Jesus Christ is the door, is the way, is the truth, yeah. is the life. And his door, as long as you are in him, is always open. Well, you know, one right. thing I heard years ago, this is back way before I became a believer. And I used to listen to uh, J. Vernon McGee through the Bible. Yeah. And uh, he used to always talk about, you know, God loves you. And, and it's just certain things you, it always stuck yeah. with me. When I, before I became a believer. And then this thing about God being love, 
And then as things progressed and I, I became a believer, I really seen that. But there's a lot of different periods of time where I can see specifically how God kept me from real harm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, it says it give his, he'll give his angels charge over the, I believe we have guardian angels before we get saved. And I believe we have, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we can believe for angels to be pre- protecting us and, and not in this day and time too, I believe too. So, but there's, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it just kind of takes your breath away when you think about, you know, yeah. you guys, why, you know, why us? Yeah. You know, it's just not, not to go. I mean, we need to stay humble. You yeah. need to realize that the, that God's the one that gets the glory. But when you remember God is love, yeah. does it, what, what that does is like it takes all the fear and doubt of it right. away. Right. Because right. You, you go, oh, wait a minute. That's God. He, he actually keeps his promises. He's not like us where we say something and maybe change our mind or whatever. Yeah, and it's but, it's yeah. by love that you guys do what you do. I mean, right? It's, it's I'm sitting people. here thinking about all of you guys. You know, Greg, Greg, bless his heart, he has this format. He has this forum. You know, Kevin, you're doing your thing. I mean, you're you're a blessed man, very intelligent and a, a real blessing. Um, Brother Raymond, you know, Bob and John, you guys. I mean, I I don't want to miss this on Sundays because I'm with my brothers and I, I'm learning. A mm-hmm. lot of things, and I realize that there's just, you know, God has given each of us the ministry of reconciliation, and each of us a gift, yeah, if you will. I mean, we yeah. we have yeah. there's a we, cohesion to the puzzle. We each it's have a stronger to, bond, yeah, right, right. We each got a piece yeah. of the puzzle, but it's a stronger bond. Yeah. Everybody's got these little yeah. things, and everyone's all together, and we're just yeah. making it stronger, you know. You know. I, and you know what, guys? It, la- it lasts. It lasts. It goes echoes into eternity. Mm-hmm. It's not something that's just going to be thrown to the thrown to the wayside right. like right. the rest of the stuff right. in in the world. I mean, all other conversations other than a topic on the Lord yeah. is just useless. Right. It really is. It's just waste of time and 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 talk. It's and your breath, unless it's about the Lord and you're glorifying yeah. Him. Yeah. Everything else is just going to fall wayside. But what we're saying, what we're doing is all to glorify him and it, it's going to echo into eternity and the bible speaks of, of of rewards for the saints and that you know what i'm not here for i'm not here for a reward i'm here because i love the lord jesus christ amen. and i want to be with him amen. and i want to serve him for eternity most okay. of amen there's no other agenda here folks there's no other agenda I mean, we're not the, we're not doing this for the money we're not doing this because Get gain fame. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> yeah. Did you guys get paid? I haven't gotten paid. I, get paid. <laughs> I haven't gotten paid. <laughs> so, you, know, you know, it's funny you said that, Greg, because I remember this guy he had a near death experience, and when he went into the heavenlies before he came back to life, the angel said to him, The only thing that matters in this world is what you do for God's kingdom. Everything else you do is forgotten and completely forgotten. Nobody That's can right. recall it. In fact, oh, you even feel ashamed oh, to even bring it up. In the next That's right. next life, you want me to bring it up? You like even some nice car you had? Just, uh, no, nobody wants to hear about it. <laughs> only, only people, yeah. only thing the angel said. Only, only thing that matters is what you do for God's kingdom while here on the earth. Amen. And, and today, during uh, during my prayer time before the sh- before I came on, um, the Lord showed me that you know there are a lot of people out there, Christians who are scared right now because this thing's really coming at us quick. Now yeah. we're getting to the thickness of the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord showed me, you know, I even thought about a few things for my family and stuff like that. And the Lord showed me, it's like, Bob, yeah. why do you, why, why? It's like, it's like when John looked at the church, like, the, like to looked at the, the harlot. Why do you marvel? Right. Why do you look at that? Why, right. why, why do you even consider these things? It's like, I've already overcame this. Right. There you it's, go. It's already done. Thank you. You're too. watching this whole thing play out. Thank you, Lord. You win. You're you're already fighting for a point of victory. It doesn't matter what they're doing with the new world order. It doesn't matter what they do with that vaccine. You are already you you're already in the position of victory already. You've already won. And what's happened to the devil right now? And he showed me this. Uh, this is a perfect scenario. What's happened to the devil? The devil is kind of in prison ever since uh ever since he caused Adam and Eve to sin. He, he went into a prison of time. Yeah. And what's happening right now? We. The devil, imagine all the inmates, like we're all in a prison jail. Yeah. And you got some really you got one really bad inmate that's in here with us yeah. causing all kinds of havoc. Yeah. Now, we get out of this jail yeah. in the end. Yeah. 
Amen. But this devil, the guy, one guy's called causing all the havoc in the prison yeah. with us yeah. right now. Yeah. He eventually <clears throat> is going to go to solitary confinement. Yeah. For a thousand years. Yeah. And we're all going to be let out of this prison. And right now, he's causing so much trouble. And we're all up against the wall here because there's not a lot of room left here. Yeah, yeah. But after the rapture resurrection, we're, out, we're all out of here. And this devil and all his minions, they're going to tear the crap out of this prison. Good but enough. during that time, God's going to take up this prison, pick it up, start shaking it. Yeah. Great shaking is coming. Good Amen. <laughs> that's, why we, that's why we have to continue to be instant in prayer. You know, that's another thing. It's vitally important, you know, that the we just don't get distracted by everything that's going on. But like you're talking about your prayer time and and um, praying in the spirit and praying for one another. And if somebody comes to your mind, like I have a I have a mom and and that lives in the Seattle Washington area that's in a nursing home and she's going to be 99 years old in September, and I I can't even see her. You know, I've gotten on Zoom and done some things with her recently, but I can't get out there to see her because of this COVID thing. But um, it's it's just, you know, just, you know, if I could say one last thing here, just don't don't ever forget to pray and pray for yourself, too. Yeah. You know, I know I know you guys do yeah. pray for your families, <laughs> your loved ones. And and just don't forget I, the people I work with uh, where I work. I pray for them. Yeah. And I tell them I pray for them. I, right. you know, it's like, yeah, <clears throat> something's going on. I'd say, you know, I'll pray for you. And they look at you, and a lot of times they'll like they'll say thank you, like, like John was saying, these guys, these guys were blessed, you know, when you came and handed them the tracks. You, you just never know. Yeah. But don't, don't keep your, you know, don't be quiet when it comes to when the Lord is is working in your in your heart and life. To, you know, you might just say something to somebody to change their life. Yeah, it, it might just be a, a phrase like, yeah. Uh, you know, you're the best or just whatever it is, you know, I'd like, to, can I do to bless you today? Or, you know, with one, you're helping somebody. I, I don't know how it, I, I really don't know how it works, but even just I know it does work. Yeah. Me, good. You know, even, even those kind of short remarks, brother, sure. you know, you're at a deli or something or somewhere out in shopping or something. And you say, you know, God loves you. Or, you know, did you know Jesus Christ? He loves you so much. You know, any, any little, yeah. Sometimes just that, even if they don't, you know, they walk on, it doesn't, seem <laughs> it doesn't matter. The little, the seed is always being put out and that's the thing. You know? And it's not, and don't, be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do it. You no, know, it's, it's not, be, you know, cause what, what, what's going to happen if, no. why should you be afraid to do things to, yeah. to bless God people? Does yeah. all the work anyway, you know, yeah. you know, when you say things. That's one, that's the other thing I received in prayer today too, was the Lord said, you know, be bold, go out there, be strong, push forward. I am with you. I will, the more work you do, the more protection I'm going to send you. Man, the more, value, more valuable you become. You want to start developing other platforms. You want to start saying this, I will protect you. I will send the angels. I will send more angels. You know, and the way I see it, man, you know, if you're going to go down, go down swinging. Amen. Go down swinging, man. You yeah. might, it might take a long time for you to go down, but yeah. he will send you all the protection you need. Yeah. I mean, we got missionaries with our, with the feed, feed my sheep today. And I get all these emails about their people who are partnering up, part, partnering up with them, getting killed, mm. you know, yeah. and we've had uh, several of our, co-pastors getting killed in like in india and in nigeria mm. you know people i knew yeah. that we were supporting getting killed mm. you know so but the thing is oh they they're not scared they're, they know it seems like the more pressure that comes on us the stronger we become Amen. and i think they i think they're finding that out now here in, especially in america yeah. because the more they try to come down on trump mm. the stronger we're becoming now yeah you know it, it's like the, you, ever, you guys ever, you guys ever seen that movie um the core he has that special metal called unobtainium. <laughs> and basically, the way the way the metal works, it works. It gets stronger under pressure, which means the more pressure that comes down upon the metal, the stronger it becomes. Wow. And and as they were going down into the earth with this uh, ship, they're like, you know, he, guys like pressure, 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 pressure. He's like, what are you talking about? I thought you said this thing was indestructible. He says. We we need pressure. We just don't have enough pressure yet. It will become stronger. <laughs> and I think the church is at that point. We don't have enough pressure yet. We think we, yeah. we think we have pressure. We still don't have enough yet. We don't have enough people walking up yet, except the one percent, the three percent that we're talking here right now. 
Can I change the subject for one moment just to give a, a brief idea of how close we might be? Yeah. <laughs> the other day I made a video with this little blurb in, in it. And this was from a brother down in Louisiana who I love dearly. He's been saved a few years. And God's been downloading stuff into his, into his heart and mind. And uh, God bless him. His name is Brother Donnie Donnelly. But he's our brother. Mm -hmm. He shared this with me the other day, and I let I, I put it out in my video. Did you know that on when Noah's Ark landed on uh, Ararat, and when um, Noah released the dove, and he released it, and it came back with the the olive branch in its mouth, that that was on twenty three Elul. And it just so happens that 23 Elul this year is on 9-11. Are you serious? So he held on to the dove, which, of course, represents the Holy Spirit. And he released it seven days later. And the dove never came back. So what does that tell you? Seven days later is the 18th. Oh Shana, by the yeah. way. So, you know, Which means we're going to leave and not come back for seven years. <laughs> good chance of leaving. Just like any other guest that you might come up with, maybe it's after that. But I like the symbol. Go ahead. I like the symbolism. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, it's it's amazing, you know. And on top of that, if I can remember rightly, it turns out 9-11 in 2001 was Elul 23. Hmm. 2001 was Elul 23. That is an extremely interesting alignment. So this year again, it's 9-11, mm -hmm. it's a little 23, and everyone keeps getting 9-11, 9-11, you know, different people with numbers. So mm -hmm. it's just interesting. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I surely wish and hope and believe that, man, if we're that close, then people need to order uh, Brother Raymond's uh, package. <laughs> yeah, we need to get these packets out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I see people just hanging these, like, go and hang them on a billboard in a store. Just hang them on a billboard. People in what those oh, yeah. flash drive yeah. just doing there, yeah. and people look at the tag. It's like, how interesting, you know. And I mentioned to Raymond too that these, if you read the note on these things, I don't know if you can show that note again, <clears throat> Raymond. But um, the note is very provocative. It's very uh, you look at it. It's like, what's this rapture thing all about? Am I about to miss something important? And they may not be a believer, or they maybe they are. Maybe they're a Catholic. I don't know. But I think when people see something like that, they're going to be like, maybe there's something about, you know, I think I heard that one guy that talked to me about Jesus about three weeks ago. I think I'm going to contact him now and ask him what this whole rapture thing's all about. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking just from reading that tag, it's going to lead people to get saved before yeah. the rapture because they're going to read that tag and say to themselves, you know what? I don't want to miss that, whatever that is. I need to get educated. Amen. And they're going to find Jesus just in time. And you know what? You know what? So. And I'm not sure this is what's going to be the case. I'm not sure this is my spirit speaking, or it's just in my spirit, or the Lord told me. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I guess we'll find out in the end. There'll be. There is one final person that's going to receive the gospel. <clears throat> you know, and one final person that receives oh. the gospel right before the rapture resurrection. Yeah. And for some reason, I just feel in my spirit it has something to do with this thing we're working on here. Oh, wow. It's going to be. I don't know. It might be, or it might be with somebody that's going to receive a Bible from um, our Feed My Sheep today. Yeah. Maybe some nook or cranny somewhere in India. I don't know. But for some reason, though, I think <laughs> this is going to be huge, man. We need to get this done. I, I hope so. One of the greatest blessings of this project has been I was able to provide a couple of these flash drives to my sister who is not saved and I have, she knows my, on my heart, I, for the last 13 years, have been talking about the rapture, end times Bible prophecy, coming to fulfillment, and so forth. And just like most of the world, not hearing it, not listening, not, there's no urgency. Uh, this year, 2020, has kind of awoken people to a certain degree as to the fact that this world is, can fail you. It, there's nothing saying, and I've told this, I taught this to my kids years ago. There's nothing in this world that you have here that cannot be taken away. It all can be taken away. Only your salvation through Jesus Christ is 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 the rock, which that cannot be taken away, cannot be stolen from you. Um, 
I can't reach my sister because my sister does not want to hear the message now. Uh, after the rapture, I suspect things will dramatically change. What I've done is I've given the message, all the, the entire message of uh, where I've gone, but salvation of uh, the Bible and all, all that. So that will that, that drive will speak for me. So I would really encourage it analogously that people to your uh, unsaved relatives and friends, the people that you know, that will know you, that have a personal connection, that will particularly be disturbed knowing, well, where did so-and-so go with these other people? And I have, we have no idea. If they have this uh, flash drive uh, on them, they will have the answers right there. And I, I hope that this brings my sister to salvation, my sister and her husband as well. I have no way to reach her. She does not want to hear the message now. Um, that's why this becomes important, especially if that there's a personal connection, family, love, friends, and, and, and ones that you've known forever. Hopefully, these flash drives, even if they are not saved and they don't want to hear this, and this is kind of this topic like, like a political debate today, and they don't want to hear your viewpoint because they've heard it before, and they're like, like okay, that's so-and-so, they're a little crazy. If they'll at least agree to hold on to this, just say, just for me, hold on to this, put it in your desk drawer, they will know that it's there. So at the time of the rapture, when they have questions, they themselves might be the ones accessing that flash drive to find out, well, what, what exactly did so-and-so believe? They, 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 it was important enough for them to send me this flash drive. Um, they might check it out at that point. That, that's my hope, and that's my hope for my sister in particular. And I hope that other people have that, that you know, loved ones as well that they send these uh, flash drives to. We're going to be moving these flash drives overseas too, so we're going to get these things internationally as well. Awesome, awesome. So we, it's a uh, and it's free. Everybody listening, they're all free. Okay, so you know, obviously, we'll take care of the cost, all that stuff like that. So it's free for everybody, or just go to our website and download it there for free. If you don't want to wait in the mail, if you're smart enough to go onto our website and just start click download, I'd already done it on my computer. Just download it and put it on your own flash drive. Just save it on your computer. Yes. Save it on your laptop. Save it on your phone. You can go there right now and keep it for yourself. You may not be planning on handing them out. Just keep it for yourself. Right. Someone will find it. Somebody yeah. will find it. Our yeah. phones are not going with us. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> None of us goes with us. We go. Right. Not even this. Not even this. This flesh and blood cannot enter. Our spirit and soul are going into a new body. That's that's the word. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what um, I'm really excited about this flash drive thing because we, we want to do like big like uh, capsules. We put Bibles, all that stuff in them. We're still trying to do that stuff still. But these flash drives, man, you can put them anywhere. You can hide them in a drawer. You can leave them on a toilet inside a business. I mean, I bet you there's going to be some people that are going to get a hold of this thing and probably make a, like 10,000 of them and just start going everywhere with them. Yeah. You know? Hope so. Hope so. Amen. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I, if I one thing I wanted to mention um, that came to mind, I believe the Holy Spirit uh, reminded me of this. J.D. Farag, uh, Pastor J.D. Farag, had talked about years ago, William Blackstone, if you remember him, the evangelist, born 1840, died 1935. So he was one of the early advocates of, um, and he really pushed for the creation of the Jewish state in the Holy Land uh, back when there wasn't a state of Israel. Um, and in 1935, and its last year of life, uh, again, by a revelation of the Holy Spirit, and, and I, be I believe this, Hugh had an authentic revelation, that the Jews in the middle of the tribulation would be at the abomination that causes desolation, would be a force, you know, they, they're, the temple has been defiled, they're fleeing for their lives, and they are going, he believed, to Petra, Petra in the, the nation of Jordan currently. Um, this is the abomination that uh, Jesus spoke about, that Daniel wrote about. And uh, William Blackstone in 1935 paid for uh, workers to bury in capsules, in copper capsules, Hebrew language Bibles um, in the uh, mountainside of Petra, right there where they will be hiding in the ancient uh, city that's carved out of a mountainside. Um, with the, the passages highlighted that discusses the div divinity of Jesus, the who the Antichrist is, and so forth, basically to bring the Jewish people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Messiah. 
Um, at this point, they will know that the Antichrist, well, with the, who they thought was the Messiah was the Antichrist, and they are fleeing for their lives. And, and it dawned on me, this is, in effect, a, a uh, after the rapture message from uh, uh, Mr. Blackstone from 85 years ago at this point to the Jewish people. So what are we doing? Not, not on the same scale, I mean, but I have to admit, but uh, uh, we, what we're doing is we're speaking through time because I must have a powerful impact on these people when they know that years prior or months prior, however long, they knew that Christians were so uh, convinced through Bible prophecy, through the word of God, that this event would happen and then there would be this tribulation period, there would be an antichrist, there would be a mark of the beast, and all the things that are discussed in Bible prophecy. We knew about this ahead of time, all of it. Nothing is hidden that will be revealed. So if we have this, it, it provides credibility and also just the fact that they can't speak to us anymore, but we've left the word of God and we've left our hope for them to find Jesus uh, through, through messages, through letters. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to add, um, anybody who downloads these files, you can always add your own like letter, uh, I, and and I, I encourage people to personalize it and so forth. Add uh, if you you'd like to and so forth the message to your loved ones and so forth. Um, RaptureReady.com has a bunch of uh, examples so forth, and there are examples on there as well. But just something heartfelt. If you have anything that you felt like you would like to add to it, uh, and then uh, distribute it as you as the Lord leads leads you. So that's that's. The, yeah, but I wanted to mention William uh, Blackstone. It was it dawned on me as being sort of an after the rapture uh, uh, message, sort of, even though that's he, he did it in, in great style with burying Bibles that have been there for right. eighty five right. years. Um, but the same sort of uh, attempt to reach those that were left behind. You know, the great thing about what he did too, he highlighted all the mark, all the things that they need to look at. There's one yeah. thing we can leave Bibles behind for all the tribulation saints. They're gonna look at this Bible like, where do I start? Yeah. Well, what I like about what you did there, they they may have access to a Bible. If they have access to the Bible and this, now they know what to look for in that Bible by starting here. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome. Everything they'll need. You know. Yes. Awesome. Bible Bible study guides, um, videos, uh, and so forth. So how many it, languages? It, how many languages of the Bible did you put on there? Um, eighty. And, and what I did, languages. what I did is I it, it's all free resources I found online, and I went to Wikipedia and looked at all the most spoken languages on Earth, and because I'm trying to be systematic about it, I found many, many hundreds of uh, uh, Bible or uh, foreign language Bible versions. I suspected that many of them were in ancient Native American tongues that are not spoken any longer. So rather than just keep adding to it, I looked for what is spoken today. And based on just ballpark, based on what I looked at from Wikipedia, those 80 languages uh, of, for the Bibles that are contained in the, the flash drive represent two thirds to three quarters of all people on earth. They speak one of those languages. So mm -hmm. that, that was a, the point of it. All the rest I couldn't, you know, there are just too many, but uh, that was a good uh, uh, starting point. Man, Amen. everything and everything <laughs> people, everything people will ever need will be on his flash drive. I don't think the only thing you need to add to it would be just your own personal letter. Yeah, for those yes. of you listening, add your own personal letter to it. Start. You're gonna put 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 the flash drive drive together, stick it in, and the thing comes to says start here. Click on this. You can put your own video under. Hey, guess what? I'm gone. Should have listened. <laughs> That's what you need to do next. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's no laughing matter when that happens, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Do we have any prayer requests, Greg, or anything? Uh, well, we do have a few questions at the beginning of the webcast. Let me see if I can go down them. But um, anyway, let me let me take a look. Uh, in the meantime, I think uh, some people are asking about the what website, and I just replied edvforme.org. Of course, right. there's the the email address right there for them to see. Uh, but yeah. edvforme.org is the place to go to actually, you know, if you want a website to go to. Otherwise, just email Raymond at Raymond7779 at ymail.com. Um, so let's see what we have going on here. 
and by so the way, have, Raymond, I also go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll take. A I was going to say we also have uh, other connections. We give out Bibles overseas in different countries. So if you got if you're getting requests from people like in Germany or Africa or Nigeria, what in different countries, let me know. Mm -hmm. That way you're not sending flash drives overseas. I can get people equipped overseas to distribute them locally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just for all you people that I know this is an international platform, so people are going to be listening to this internationally too. So you people who are international in other countries, by all means, contact us. Mm -hmm. You, we can get you a free, a free flash drive anywhere on earth. Okay. Go ahead, Greg. Hallelujah. Okay, so this one is actually directed toward you, Kevin. Uh, it's from our brother Johnny. He has a strong desire to have an acceptable correspondence with you, uh, basically because you've uniquely spoken about what believers would go through after the rapture. I think Johnny is under the uh, impression he is not going to be going, even as as a believer uh, at this at this stage. Um, so it's amazing after after I've already kind of said what yeah, is going to come, he still <laughs> wants to be in that. But you know, I guess like John said, I mean, we're not going to bash him for that. No, no. I mean, what you know? If, if, I guess if God, if, who knows? That's it's above our pay grade. We're not going to be able to decide whether or not he's going to be in the rapture or not. Yeah. But what we can determine, though, is that apparently, I mean, he has a he has a heart for for Jesus. Amen. Uh, he wants to to fight for the word, and um, you know, we'll we'll see what God does. But uh, I, I, like I said, I just don't recommend it. I think that that there are others that 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 will be sealed. There are other people who can do that. You don't necessarily need to do that job. I think that that if you're saved now. That God has has a job for those who are not, and, th and those are the ones who are who are the, the the foolish virgins who haven't come to the knowledge yet. But it appears as though you have. Yeah. So, who knows what's going to happen? You know, with you personally. But um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what kind of correspondence you want to have um, regarding that. If you want to try to try to just uh, you know get Josh. me to join you in your fight, I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna be there with you. So well, where, where can you? Where can you reach you, Kevin, or, or at your YouTube channel, or um, you want to give your email address? How do, how gave, do you want? He gave his email, so I'll go ahead and I'll reach out to him um, via email. We'll we'll have a little we'll have a little chat and see see where he stands. All right, so sounds good. Um, so, all right, going moving forward. Um, let's see. Oh, someone else commented that they had they had the same idea uh, as you, brother Raymond. Um, he was going to put it on my school and USB web server. So that's interesting uh, to know. Would love to help. Would love to help. Hey. Any, anybody come on board to help out. Yeah. You know, yeah, par partner with us, whoever you are. You yes. know, that's just partner. I mean, it's better, better off as a team, man. Maybe we can bounce ideas off each other. Amen to that. Yeah. yeah I mean, the more this is out, no matter where it is, I mean, if it's on a server somewhere, doesn't necessarily mean it could be downloaded, but somebody could get into that server, get that file, and then put it onto a, a physical device and be able to share it. So, yes, uh, you never know where, 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 you know, where the where the origin point's going to be. So, the, the more places you can put it out there, the better off it is. Should be in the caves of Petra as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and anybody listening right now, if you want, to, if you've never done anything for the Lord, and you say, you know what, Bob, I think I can handle giving out. 200 flash drives a month i can do that bob then great they get on our website download enough information to 200 different flash drives the flash drives are pretty inexpensive uh we provide uh the link or i will at least provide a link we can go buy them on uh, amazon i know um raymond can find them pretty cheap on amazon they're pretty cheap yes. like three dollars a piece yep. so if you have no, nothing to do for the lord if you want to do some work for the lord and maybe you want to take a different path rather than giving out tracks you want to start working on this by all means join us in the work okay by all means and there's plenty of work here to do in this vineyard plenty of work in this vineyard to do man <laughs> yeah fields are white Amen. for the harvest yeah that's right yeah and what's amazing is that a lot of them were were a part of the church at one time i mean not necessarily around the world because a lot of them do grow up with other faiths and then they come to jesus but 
it, it's it's worse, I think, for people in America who have no excuse. Where they they some of them have grown up learning the word and have turned away from it onto silly pleasures. Basically, is is ultimately what it comes down to, is trying to virtue signal and have people like like you for what you say and what you do. Yeah, it's just it's just such a sad state right now that that we're in in the world, but. It's interesting that God is pointing this out to a lot of people, and they and we are seeing revival in in certain areas and cert, with certain people in certain countries, especially where the power gets so so hard on people that they only really have one thing to turn to, and that's Jesus, right? I mean, that's all they've got left. Yeah. You know, Happy Jack mentioned. Um, I thought about th- I thought about this too. If there is electricity and they have not taken the mark of the beast. Then this, you know, basically this, uh, this, um, this uh, flash drive would be useful. I promise you, there will be, there will be electricity. That's yeah. how they use the mark of the beast. Yeah, the right. mark of the yeah. beast will not exist without electricity. <laughs> they need electricity, everybody. So it will be there. Computers will be there. Okay, the internet's going to be a, a total train wreck. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you try to look up Bible verse on the internet after the rapture, I I promise you they already have a cork at the yeah. bottom of the pool. They're going to pull on that. Yeah, that's right. That's my that's one of my biggest concerns is that a lot of people who are making videos saying I'm speaking to the tribulation saints, and it's like, are they even going to see it? I mean, yeah. I, I, that's why I really like this physical medium because the because yeah. you will have electricity up till the point where. There is a mark system, and then you either right. buy or sell with the mark, so you're yeah, not going to have like your electricity without it. <laughs> right. But before mm-hmm. that, you will be able to access it. And listen, God doesn't want anyone to perish, so He is going to provide avenues that we can't even really even imagine. Mm-hmm. 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 By the grace of God, too, just 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 shows you all. It shows you the love of God. All of this, all of the, you know, the work, and and it's it's this is we're living in the th- the age of grace right now. The age of grace is going to end at some point, and that's one of the reasons for this. You know, that's why I do it now. Because why wait? We're well, here, here, so, here's my, so here's my response to Johnny: is that I, you know what? God is going to take who God's going to take in the rapture. I mean, I explained that month, you know, a couple months ago, that the word harpazo is you don't have control over that force that's taking you. You just you can't say yes or no. That's right. You've said yes or no beforehand. Yeah. And that's what determines whether or not God takes you. You don't get to negotiate, I don't believe, with God at that point. In, in, in no no exp- um, instance of Harpazo in the past was there a negotiation that was going on. It just, mm-hmm. it happened. So I, I, I do I, I do think that that I'm right and that you, you will be raptured. I, I, although... Like I said, if you re- if your heart really doesn't want to be raptured and God decides, I guess there is a negotiation going on between you and God, but God's made the choice regardless. So I don't think you need to worry either way. We're not here for a spirit of fear. We're here for a spirit of hope. Amen. And when you think about what we're looking toward is the blessed hope of Jesus' return. Amen. I don't see why you would want to stay. Right. I would think right. you'd want to go, right? right? If you believe in the rapture, you will be taken in the rapture. Yeah. I think There's no sin that's going to keep you away from the rapture because we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. But it's not just day. believing in the rapture. I mean, let's be honest here. No, it's no, not no. Just, Jesus. I believe in an escape, and so I want to escape. But but no. but, but the blessed hope is faith no. in, in Jesus that he faith, has redeemed faith, you and that he is faith. worthy to save you, right? Faith, hope, and love. We are worthy only because he is worthy. And so we, we do look for the blessed hope, but our, our, our salvation is in Jesus. And yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. And that's all. That's all. That's all we have. That's yeah. our only hope. That's it. That's it. Yeah. This will probably also explain the way why children are taken too, because they have faith of a yes. they have faith of a child. A child. And, oh, just a and God knows. God. God understands that division. That. 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 Uh. That fine line. Yeah. And that the children will be there taken. for a reason, Bob. You're right. Yeah. The verse is there for a reason. You got to have a childlike faith. It doesn't mean yeah. that you have to be a child, because there are adults that have a childlike faith. The childlike faith. Is taking all that morass that you talked about earlier and tossing that aside and just looking at what what is truth and what's not and seeing mm-hmm. that the simple fact is the childlike faith is you need a redeemer and that there is only one entity and I call it an entity because Jesus became human yeah. uh, in mm-hmm. the flesh but was also God so it's he's different than us he's different than anything else that that existed 
-hmm. I mean, because he created everything and nothing without him uh, wasn't was created, wasn't created without him. So mm -hmm. when you consider that point of view, it does become a simple conclusion of whether or not you're able and, and what Raymond said, are you able to save yourself or other people are going to save you? It's not going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Only by the grace of God, there go we, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. a personal relationship, everyone. It really is a personal relationship. It is. It, it's it's not about you. a group religion, is it? It's not about it's a group denomination. It's not it's about you and God. It really yeah. is. It always will will be. It's between you and the Lord. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to bring you four with me to the beam of judgment seat. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be you. You're going to have to decide. And I'm not going to be able to go, well, Bob Bob convinced me, and I, I thought it was all right. But, you know, I'm going to let Bob speak on my behalf. Because Bob knows more than I do. About this. You know, I mean, that's really ultimately where, where, where a, a so-called Christian says, oh, I'm a Christian. Why? Well, I was born in a family as Christian. <laughs> well, does that does that make you a believer in Jesus? Yeah. It's a personal thing. You cannot rely on your family. You cannot rely on yourself, your church, your pastor. How many prayers you said? That's it's right. all about you know the, the, that you have believed that that Jesus has redeemed you from this world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Amen. Absolutely. Good show. Good Amen. Hey, well, good guy. This was great, guys. Thank you, Raymond, for coming on with us. We really appreciate you coming on for it and. Uh, sharing what you have uh what the lord's placed on your heart to do um it's great i mean it really is and uh you know we i thank you for it um guys really happy um to have you on and listen hope maybe we can even have you on in a future future date again um thank that you would yeah. Be great. yeah awesome so once again, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we, we appreciate your time. Uh, we hope this has been a blessing to all of you. Please uh, make sure that you download the uh, previous uh, recordings on your audio, on your mobile device, which you can find us on iTunes and Spotify. And um, you know you can download them right to your device. So you're not just streaming. If you know we ever lost streaming ability, capability, then hey, they're on your device, right? So. All right. Well, thank you once again. God bless you. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back here again next week.